Hello. Uh, started to say Jim Howard, but I don't have to do... Well, wait a minute. I need to change the screen. Here we go. Uh, you're probably going to notice that it is much quieter here because I'm home alone. Uh, my son's in the hospital, grown son. And uh, I made a video about that. It's the one previous to this, but... I'm going to delete it here in a little bit on screen for you. Uh, it's, I think, a, was it an hour and a half video or two hours? I can't remember. Anyway, I'm going to delete it. I just, uh, I don't feel comfortable, you know, talking about my son's problems. And, you know, he's grown grown son in his 40s but I just don't feel comfortable talking about it you know he's entitled to his you know private life um, but it should be <clears throat> should be very quiet the uh, ex-wife Darlene is gone for it she went for a doctor's appointment yesterday and she's just got picked up today to go for a, another doctor's appointment and uh, I guess today I'm finally going to have to, I've got about three or four doctor's appointments that I need to make and the uh, eye doctor they keep the office keeps sending a email <coughs> thing to me so I guess <coughs> after this uh, video uh, I guess I'll call them make an appointment for next month um I'm not sure the uh, eye appointment's the most important one, but that's the one I'm going because they've been, every few months they've been hitting me with this thing, saying, hey, you know. And uh, I have a couple of cataracts. I, was, I saw the eye doctor two years ago, and there was a couple of cataracts that are just barely, you know. And I said, oh, just, you know, uh, uh, let's not worry about it right now. And... So, I guess it's time to worry about it. Except I'm one of those people, if you get near my eye, I would have trouble putting drops in my eyes. I mean, I just, it's just a thing about eyes. So, uh, anyway, this video should be no background noise. Unless <clears throat> one of the many fighter jets that fly over this place fly over and it's kind of noisy here too when the uh, lawn crew comes and uh, you know does the lawn work around here for this apartment complex um, so um, let's see here Here is uh, the video that I made, which is, well, it was only one hour and three minutes that I made yesterday where, talking about, where I talked about mental health care and uh, hospitals and police departments that get involved and all these type of, and everything. And I talked for about an hour. And uh, so far, 16 people have watched it. And... Um, I am going to, let's see, I am going to go and delete it. Uh, okay, that see download to thanks clip save report okay that's not it oh edit let's go here to edit the video and I think it's up here delete and uh, check the box and delete forever 
I, you know, I made that video for a reason, and I think it could help a lot of people and inform a lot of people. It could make it, you know, could make a difference. But uh, also, um, I I just don't feel it's fair to my to my son. He has a right to, you know, privacy, and you know, I mean it's not his fault that he's. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Uh, not his fault for what he what happens, what goes on. So, <coughs> if you're looking for something in your life, you know, let's say you're in the United States, if you're looking for something in your life some way to help people or whatever uh, helping people that have uh, psychological or emotional disorders and things like that that's that's if you can you know collect money through you know a uh, someplace like that or, or vote for people you know for your state legislature or for Congress who are interested in helping those kind of people and just if you can do something you know donate money if you can uh, uh, you know work for an organization or just vote for people who uh, don't vote for somebody like you know President Reagan because he did d disastrous I know he's actually <laughs> President Reagan um, the today's Republican Party, I don't think they respect him at all, and he he used to be like their their idol. You know what I mean, like you know they the Republicans like you know worshipped at his feet or whatever. I think that's changed. It's a new Republican Party, a different party, and uh, but you know if you can try to vote for people that. You know, instead of wanting to line their pockets or uh, wheel some type of vengeance against people that they don't like, people that are a certain color that they don't like, or speak a certain language that they don't like, or come from a certain country that they don't, you know, instead of instead of voting for those kind of people, try to vote for people that, you know, care for people, people who are concerned about people who need help and. You know, try to be one of the people helping in whatever way it is that you know that you see. So I deleted that video. I I think there were a lot of good points that I made in the video that I just uh, deleted, but I just don't feel comfortable, you know, talking about those issues. You know, since it's you know. I wouldn't feel comfortable talking about it if I were talking about, you know, somebody that wasn't related to me. But so, um, in about five or six days, I'm going to order this uh, Mayana, I guess, an audio interface. Uh, it supplies 48 volts of phantom power. So you can uh, run a, uh, I should show you, by the way, I just saw it. It's on the shelf there someplace. Just hang on there a second. I'm going to pause this for a second. Okay, I'm back. Um, this is one of the devices that I I have. <clears throat> I, I did in the past, you know, what is it, DMR? What in the heck is that? What are those uh, XLR microphones? And they need, uh, I think it's 48 volts. And this, you know, supplies, you know, 48 volts. So the... Uh, microphone would work. Um, 
you know, it plugs in here, the cable, you know, the cable. I have some of the cables too. I probably have, because uh, I honestly uh, gave it a try. I, I did not like it. Sam, I am, or whatever. That's what it sounds like. Um, here's what it looks like on the back, in case you're wondering. Now, um, I don't like the XLR <coughs> microphones, but that's what, you know, a lot of people that have really good audio and that type of stuff, that's what they, you know, that's what they use. <coughs> um, so I'm, uh, whoops, go back over here. Now I'm going to get this, but I'm not sure I have a, a, a DMR microphone. I mean an XLR microphone. Um, but this soundboard or whatever you want to call it, it will take, like from my headset here, 3.5 jack, it'll take that. It will uh, take the input from uh, the Avery Media uh, audio input. It'll take it from the Razer. Um, it'll take it from the, uh, which is, if I can find a way to mount this thing, I broke the thing. Um, whoops. Okay. After I've done this, I keep changing things around. I'll get, you know, this is the Elgato. Um, and there's a, you know, a C, USB-C. So, um, so I'll be able, when I get this to, you know, try out this and I'll have adjustments and try out these various, you know, see which one works, you know, which one works best. And if I don't have one, and I don't think I do, I think I gave them away, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, to a, a maintenance guy who uh, uh, does music on the side, you know, sets up his equipment and at events and things, and and I gave him a bunch of stuff like that. I'm not sure that he was really into uh, XLR radio or, or, or uh, uh, micro microphones. I think he was using others. Um, but anyway, in about five or six days, I'll have this, and uh, if you look up there on it, I mentioned this in another video not long ago, it, it says, uh, last purchased on <clears throat> March 4th of 2023, I went to Amazon back then, and they had, you know, this, um, device <coughs> for sale and <coughs> but I looked at it really fast and they had the microphone stand with it and they had the microphone and the whole bit so click I ordered it and then it came and it was just the box and you know and the, a few cables and things like that no microphone and whatever so uh, I didn't even hook it up, which I could have done, and I, I returned it to, you know, from to Amazon, got my money back immediately, you know, and, uh, but, uh, now they made an upgrade, this is the AME2, so there was a, some type of a little upgrade made to it, of course you can upgrade, you know, by, uh, but there was some type of a hardware or something upgrade made. And so anyway, I'm going to order this in, and, and I'm going to try. I, I think it'll work. Uh, I mean, I'll have a whole bunch of options, so many different options. Uh, uh, and like I said, I did, you know, I did try the XLR. The cables were, well, 
bulky. I, it was just a whole bunch of things that I didn't, you know, didn't really like about it. Um, uh, but when I get this in, you know, now I wish I, when I got that one that I didn't, where I made a mistake and ordered the wrong one, I just ordered the what I'm ordering now, going to order now in a week or so. Uh, but as you see down there one where it says, oh, you can't see it. Okay. Eventually I'll get used to doing this, but I keep making changes. You can see down here it says, uh, you know, technology or whatever, XLR. And those are the microphones that you see so many times that are, you know, that looked good. And they're on a stand and everything, and it's right, you know, up a few inches from the person. Uh, the only thing is, you know, the way I am, if, if if you bend over or you do something, you don't lose the signal. But I mean, it, it goes down a lot. It wants to be right there, uh, you know, in your mouth. But as you see, 3.5. Now, I don't know what that MM trrs code means but i i'm sure that it means um you know a microphone one of these microphones that let's see i can't show one i have a whole bunch of well here's one yeah that uh okay uh, this has this is it would go on the end of this uh but so here's one see the two black bands of course they could be well if it was microphone well this one here is microphone but it's not red in there but anyway they made it to save some money so there are some that have three and I think four and that tells you a little different about you know plugging it in what you can plug it in what you can expect or whatever so and then uh, I don't know what this 6.35 mm is and then of course it's usb type c and i've got one two uh, three and uh, others so i think i'll be able to come up with some good audio i hope uh, um, i'm using manicam I, nobody in a while has said OBS, but everybody, a lot of people over the time, have, and I tried OBS, I used OBS. I think I've forgotten everything I'd learned from it, but. Uh, with this device that I'm getting, I, uh, I'm i not going to do a bunch of the, uh, some of these, which I hate, down here on the sound pad or whatever. They even have it written on the keys. You know, one will be laugh, one will be gunshot, one will be, I don't know what, you know, uh, whatever. But this one, you can still do some of that stuff, and you just, a uh, few keys you uh, you know, you program it. So that's okay, but I'm not going to be um, um, you know, doing that kind of stuff. That BT, of course, is Bluetooth. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, so my son's in the hospital, and my ex-wife, she went. She had a doctor's appointment yesterday that she went to, and she uh, is at a doctor's appointment now. And I guess here later today, I'll go ahead and make my phone call and make an appointment with my eye doctor. I've got those. I have diabetes, and you should be checked every year by an eye doctor when you have diabetes. I have type 2 diabetes. Um... What else? Let's see. I moved things around a little bit. I mentioned this, but I might have mentioned it in the video that I deleted. I moved the uh, Dell, the 
$200 refurbished one. I moved it away and I have hearing loss really bad. I've had it since it happened in the first grade of school. Um, and my parents never did anything about it. You know, they, I brought home a, you know, a, a printout. Actually, it was like a printout. It was a computer. And even I, you know, like, a, you know, hey, this looks bad. <laughs> Gave it to my parents. They never did anything about it. Since I flunked the second grade, they... You know, they were doing that test at a Catholic school. It was unusual in a Catholic school to get... You know, all we did was, uh, you know, sell candy, go door to door selling candy, and go door to door uh, oh, and getting newspapers, you know, and loading those into a big semi-truck. And then uh, uh, somebody would come and haul those to the place, and they would weigh it or whatever. Of course, I'm sure they knew. They probably didn't actually weigh it, but they knew if the truck was filled, you know. And then the school would get X amount of money, you know, for newspapers that could be recycled. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, but my parents never did anything about my hearing loss. And then when I became an adult, you know, and went to welding school and then started working and as a welder and making good money, union jobs. And uh, I never did anything about my, my hearing. And many, many years later, working hospital security, I worked hospital security for 30 years. Uh, and I forget how old I was. I was up there, <laughs> not far from retirement. And I changed doctors. And, uh, you know, one of the local doctors or whatever, uh, Gallant and Harlow. I know that doesn't mean anything to you. It sounds like. Who were the guys that stole the bodies or whatever back in the in the old days? Um, they were good. I'm not just. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> but so I went and uh, had an, you know my exam because I was changing doctors, and uh, he looked at me and he, you know, they, they said, "Do you uh, do you smoke?" And I said, "No, nope, never did." And, you drank? And I said, nope, never did. And uh, so then the next time I went to back to see him, I guess to get the results or something, you know, hmm, are you saying you don't drink? And I said, yeah, that's, you know, I drink Coke. <laughs> that's it, you know. And uh, I don't think he believed me. Now, he knew me from the hospital or whatever, but anyway, <laughs> um, but he said, you know, he asked me all the questions. And I said, well, I do have hearing loss. I've never had it checked. He said, never? I said, never. And he said, well, you know, let's send you over. And he, he says, uh, we'll make a, uh, what do you call it? Not an appointment, but uh, set it up for you. And we'll let you know what, you know, when it is. <clears throat> so I got a call. And. They said, you know, your appointment with the, uh, you know, we've made the appointment, your, what do they call that? Not appointment. It was all taken care of. Well, supposed to be all taken care of. So I show up at this fancy, uh, you know, booze, like this is, what, this is a $64,000 question or something like that. And I mean, it, that was really pretty neat, you know, have all this equipment. And they said, uh, where, uh, where, where's your referral? And I said, I don't have a referral. Well, you have to have a referral. And I said, well, I didn't make this appointment. My doctor made the appointment for me. You know, he said he was, that they were taking care of it and they would tell me and I'm here. And they said, oh, you have to have a referral. And uh, I said, well, I'm, I'm here. What, what, does the, what does the exam cost? I forget what it was. I was like, what you know now with my insurance I don't think it was anything maybe well it might have been a maybe a fifty dollar you know fee or something some of the specialists that think the standard are twenty five dollars of the visit or something with a specialist not with your regular doctor with the insurance you know no charge for that but if you go to one of the specialists and I think now that 
I think the insurance thing has changed. I think the specialists are not. Uh, I can look on my card, except my card is in my billfold. Um, doesn't matter. Um, so I forget. You know, I asked how much it was, and I was like, "Oh, well, okay, I'll." I'll go and get a referral from my doctor. I mean, not go then, but I'll have a referral, you know. I just And I never had it done. So here I am, 82 years of age, and uh, I've had for, you know, almost all my life, you know, from the time I was in first grade, uh, bad hearing, which got worse, of course. I mean, it was really bad, but it got worse because I was working for years you know, uh, building railroad cars and uh, tr big tr trucks and then big, 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 big trucks like this one here, which, you know, the dark truck, except this is this is a big truck, but it's not, you know, it looked like b babies next to the uh, other trucks that we built, gigantic trucks. So um, that pounding and stuff going on all the time that did not help my hearing and it affected but I made it through my work you know I worked I was never I worked I was never without a job and for many years I had uh, you know a full-time job and then part-time job on my days off or whatever and uh, I mentioned before one of the jobs I had I really loved, but there, it, there there was these magazines. I'm not sure if they even exist now because we have the internet. But there was these magazines in the store, and it would be like money making opportunities or uh, something like that. And I bought a couple of those, and it, you know, every page was like, "Here's how you can make money," you know, doing such and such. And there was a thing in there selling printing. And so I think I sent in a small thing to get the catalog, and the catalog came, you know, this this stick or whatever. And when you flipped it open, it showed like business cards, all different, you know, all different kinds of card paper, uh, <clears throat> all different colors uh, that you could get, the script, you know, the uh, that all that kind of stuff, and. Uh, so I went out and started calling on small businesses in the area, my area, and uh, I did well. I was surprised. I didn't think I could sell. I mean, there's several things I didn't think that I could do in my life, and uh, I found out that I could do them. One of the things when I was in, even in high school, I, I. And I went to a military high school. It sounds like I, my parents had money. You know, they didn't. They both were, you know, both worked. My dad was a border maker. And, you know, a union job. Uh, but uh, there were things that I didn't think I could do. And uh, one, of them, one of them would be like, oh, when I was in, like, high school, I, I didn't notice it in grade school. And I'm not sure why that was. But in high school, I hoped and prayed that the teacher didn't, you know, that the brother, Christian brother, didn't call on me. Because I would get, like, red in the face, you know. And also, that was kind of bad because, you know, if the brother came into class and there had been noise or people throwing something or cadets throwing something, whatever. And if he said, who did that? I think he would think it was me because my face would be like, you know, I'd be look like a guilty person, you know, you know, hook me up to the electric chair or whatever. So what I found out was I had no trouble going, selling to these because we'd had a tropical fish shop for four years and, uh, and I, I knew the, the bit, the, and uh, you know, stuff. And so I, uh, I had no trouble going in and, I enjoyed it, going into a small shop and saying, hey, I've, uh, you know, I've got, uh, however, you know, uh, business cards, envelopes, you know, whatever. And uh, now, 
when I called on these places, uh, one, occasionally they were small businesses. Now, I did not have, I wouldn't have been able to go to like IBM or uh, Walmart or something and, and go and say, you know, I was like a salesman going there, you know, and then they'd want to refer me to their purchasing department and you go in and there's people in business suits and uh, they'd want to be like, okay, well, you know, we're interested in uh, 100,000 business cards. How much of a discount do we get for 50,000? How many for 100,000? How much of a, you know, they'd be, and, oh, you know, but I called on these small businesses and we were like, hey, you know. Uh, so I found out that if I knew my subject, uh, then I was okay. But if I had a, a, a list made or something, you know, that these are I'm, these are things I'm going to talk about or, you know, a diagram or whatever, uh, uh, that doesn't work for me. I, uh, you know, so, and I enjoyed going to these businesses and when I would, when they would buy something, like the business cards, I'd make sure to come back that they got their stuff. And then I would take one of their business cards. I would then give them, you know, a, for free, you know, a, a plastic thing or two to set on their thing and say, hey, you know, put those in there. And, I, and I'd tell them, hey, you know, when you have somebody, what are, depending on the kind of a business, you know, I'd say, what you do when they come in, you know, is take your card and write how much, you know, it's going to cost them or what you can give them a, a discount or whatever that is, you know, any kind of stuff. And then, of course, I would take one and then I would rubber cement it into my catalog and the catalog was like this thick and then as I then as that went on before long I, I'd I'd go into some place you know and uh, flip it open you know a business card you know okay such and such you know they were cheap by the way nope they were I mean they were good quality and everything you know but inexpensive and then I'd flip the thing and then they would see Smith Secretarial Service, you know, who, and she was in the local area, she was the head of the, uh, not the Better Business Bureau, the Chamber of Commerce or something like that. Oh, I know, you know, and then they'd, they'd recognize all these cards of all the people around them, you know, and it made it really easy to, you know, to deal with them. And what was interesting, though, you know, this from this magazine, you know, they sold, other companies did too, sort of things like that, and were sent these things, and I have a feeling that a lot of these people, uh, I mean, I had a wife and kids, so I mean, I had to, uh, had to I had to work, I had to make money, and, uh, but, uh, the, uh, oh, so, I think I got sidetracked. I was thinking of something else, but I'm not sure I want to go there right now. But, um, they, oh, a lot of these people, I think, you know, got this. And, well, a lot of them got it, you know, sent for it, paid whatever it was, a small amount of money, and just put it on. Or maybe they called on two or three people that they knew, you know, and sold them a few, and then they just, you know. But, uh, they paid you for each order. Uh, now, of course, if I sold business cards and envelopes and stationery, and that, that would all come in the mailbox with a check. But like the business cards, and maybe I made, I don't know, I'm not sure what it was. It wasn't very much. You know, maybe $6, uh, maybe less than that because they were inexpensive. But I'd go to the mailbox. <laughs> And I'd have a whole bunch of envelopes, all from the same company, each one for each one of these orders. I think there was a Steinfeld episode where Jerry, uh, his comedy routine or something was uh, playing or something in Japan or something. And he was getting, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not revenue. Anyway, he was getting a check, and it would be like a two-dollar check or something like that, so or a one-dollar check, and he had a whole, you know, a whole bunch of them, and uh, that was a funny routine. But that actually happened. Um, 
uh, my problem was well the one that I, I could not go to a big comp corporation and go in there I mean I I didn't even own a suit I'm not sure I ever owned a suit I mean at high school I was in a military uniform you know type of uniform I'm not sure I you know I think my parents bought me slacks and a shirt of some kind or something. I mean I don't think I owned a suit ever um, but um, uh, so, okay I got sidetracked again anyway with the checks coming that way oh so I called on these small businesses and I'd come in and their front door would be boarded up with ply board and I'd say what happened uh, somebody broke in, you know, last night and uh, smashed the door and stole stuff. And uh, now at that time, we this was after we had our tropical fish shop for four years. <clears throat> and when we were in the basement, first we were in a house, but it was zoned for business. And it was right around the corner from the police station not the main police station but you know one of the things uh, and then we were for one year I think it was I say no we were there for about a year first place about a year then we were across the street at a veterinarian's hospital in the basement which we thought was fine and that worked out good because then I started selling uh, fish medications I studied up on it and uh, was asked at the community college asked me to do a non-credit course on you know tropical fish stuff and I did ichthyology or whatever um, <clears throat> and I didn't do well at that because I knew why well, you know we'd had the fish shop and I, I knew you know Darlene did the ordering of the fish I did the ordering of the plants. We had the best plants, you know. The uh, I I got in the very best plants, and people bought them. I mean, you know, they were kind of expensive. I mean, more so than you could go to Katz's or I don't think I'm not sure there was any WalMarts in, but you know, go in and get crap, you know, loaded with snails and ick and other problems. But uh, so the uh, uh, but. So I, I don't think I did well at the uh, class because the people there also were they were they were, cause they were like those people who had more fish tanks in their basement than we had in our fish shop and they were you know that was a hobby with them I mean it was really and they got together with other people and instead of going to the tropical fish shop they got together and placed an order you know and sent off an order to and had it you know shipped to them and then they divided up and they were uh, they didn't respect us at all I mean they should have uh, well they just should have because you know we were uh, well not me but my at that time wife you know when she was little she had polio and stuff and uh, you know had to use braces and that kind of stuff and had to use crutches when I got married you know she had to use crutches from polio by the way the vaccine came you know right after she got polio and polio doesn't exist anymore really except in a few countries where <clears throat> whatever the religious you know thing is or it's just people in that country that are trying to control their people and you know polio doesn't exist anymore now there's a rare case occasionally but polio put an end to it the vaccine so if you're somebody who doesn't believe in the vaccines or you think that they're you know genetically turning you into I don't know something you're, you're mistaken because when I was a kid growing up <clears> that <throat> summertime would come and polio would come and the cities would close like our city Kansas City the swimming pools would be closed movie theaters would be closed any place where you know and uh, it was bad you know 
and uh, so um, anyway um, so anyway I uh, we were in the basement of veterinarian's hospital and so I said could you order you know soluble penicillin you know you know yeah and I said well you know I, I, I want to package it in a you know in vials and uh, you know have it printed what it is and that type of stuff and he said fine so he did it so we stayed there about a year and his place was well they broke in through our downstairs we were in the basement <laughs> they broke in on the which was easy to do you know they broke in there and they came through and they went up the stairs and they went in and uh, stole I guess tried to or did or you know some type of narcotics or something. They, did, they weren't interested in uh, the tropical fish medication. They didn't know that was, you know, but still they weren't interested in that. They weren't interested in, you know, that kind of stuff. But we were doing a great business in, and the, the people who had no respect for us, these people, you know, they were, I, I, had, I had no bad feelings against them or whatever, but they felt like, you know, well, I have more fish tanks, you know, than Siggy's Aquarium has. Well, yeah, we were selling fish, you know, for whatever, and we weren't interested in having the biggest fish or the electric eel or anything like you might be a hobbyist, and that's what you want in your basement or something. But, but so they, but when it came to once a year, there was a, uh, not a museum, I forget what it was the thing that had displays things on display so the tropical fish clubs and people <clears throat> would pay a little bit of money and they would go there and they'd set up their fish tanks which that's a lot of work I know because that's what I did <laughs> except fairly small tanks and uh, so those people went there and set them up and then they the word went out and people would go there to look at the fish all the fish you know the discus and the electric eels and the, so I'll call that kind of stuff so, so that they kind of looked down you know but they would come and buy their plants from us because I ordered the best plants and then a few times when they needed something they would you know frozen shrimp Daphne and all this kind of stuff that we also carried you know for our customers it it hurt them I mean I think they made a they couldn't help making a little you know remark or something I don't know why they were that way maybe all maybe stamp collectors would be the same way or I don't know somebody that collects well I don't even want to think about the people that collect guns I know how they are you know um, <coughs> let's see so well, that, well that's the way I got into security these small businesses that I called on and they'd have their you know and so then I I told Darlene I said you know and at that time there wasn't a big you know there was Burns Pinkerton Wells Fargo and a couple others and they were big you know and they had in the yellow pages or whatever they had you know pictures not pictures but drawings or whatever you know of their officers you know that type of stuff and uh, there weren't very many and I told Darlene I think you know uh, I think we need to get into you know and so we did uh, I went to, I first went to work for you know uh, Burns I think I worked a, I think that I worked one day for Burns I guess I guess that doesn't count they advertised I looked in the newspaper or whatever. Oh, uh, Burns is looking for a dispatcher. And I pictured like a 9 one They didn't have 911 centers, you know, then. But that's what I figured, you know. So, yeah, one day. So I went over to Burns, and they hired me in immediately. I had no previous, yeah, no previous experience at that point. And, uh, yeah. So, um I hadn't started working hospital security or anything, uh, and they hired me. And 
and said, okay, and I had a cardboard, it had like like a coffee table, or a, 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 a table you'd set up that was, you know, <laughs> and I think they had one phone on it. I don't think they had two phones on I expected a, you know, communication center, you know, because, well, I was into shortwave radio and tracking Earth satellites, Sputnik 1 and Explorer 7. I'd fall asleep with headphones on and Explorer 7 <clears throat> U.S. satellite would wake me up when it came around. I was, but I was expecting something like that. Hey. So um, then they said, okay, now you have to read this. They said, we have a contract, you know, of course the corporation did, you know, with United States Steel. If one of their aircraft lands, you know, at our airport here, we have to dispatch, uh, you know, our elite unit, or <laughs> didn't have an elite unit, you know. Uh, I found out pretty damn quick, you know. And then the phone rings, you know, some guys, you know, sick or whatever, or drunk or something. And then they took care, you know, they called one of their super. He didn't want to be a supervisor for Burns, Pinkerton, and Wells Fargo, or any of those, because that was not a good job. You got a little extra money, but it was not a good job. Because when somebody doesn't show up, they were going to have you, you know, you were going to be thinking you were going to be running around and checking on these people. You know, they'd say, okay, now you need to go over there and work 12 hours. And then you'd work your 12 hours for Burns, Pinkerton, or whoever it was. And then you'd be waiting to go home. And uh, then somebody would call in and then you'd, you know, or they'd maybe call the company. And then the company would say, okay, well, we well, try to get somebody out there to relieve you. And you might end up working another 12 hours. And then I actually saw this. Now, I wasn't in that group because at that point when I was that, I was working full-time hospital security. So the, you know, this is after I started my patrol service, you know. So I had an understanding with these, you know, with these people, you know, Burns, Pinkerton, Wells Fargo, I can't remember the name of the rest of them. Uh, like they used to be, there didn't, there didn't used to be a, a U.S. Marshal Service or an FBI or anything like that back in the olden days or whatever, it was Burns and Pinkerton, private security. Uh, Pinkerton had the, uh, let's see, Burns and Pinkerton. I think Pinkerton had the railroads, and that was important. And they, you know, and I think Burns had the contracts for the banks. And that was important back then too. But uh, anyway, uh, I, when I was, uh, you know, working as a second job security. Or whatever I I no these are the days I will work for you, and don't call me for anything you know for anything else. And then two there was that was considered a good job. It wasn't very far from where I lived. It was a, a tavern, and they wanted a, of course an armed security officer you know there, and uh, so and they were having trouble out in their parking lot. So I was out in the parking lot. Of course, I made it, you know, a check of everything, but I was out in the parking lot. And uh, the owner, you know, comes out and says, uh, come on in. And so I go in with him. I didn't know what, it, you know, and it goes over to a table where he's sitting with some people that he knows, maybe their family or friends or whatever. And then he tells them, you know, uh, this is my, I don't think he said police officer, which I was not, you know. I don't think he said police officer. I think he did say security. This is my security. And of course, I was armed, you know, handcuffs, you know, whatever. And uh, I, uh, he, he only did that once, too. And, oh, okay, yeah, I didn't call, I, I just cut him down. I mean, I, I forget what I did. I mean, you know, he was, it was supposed to make him bigger or something or rather, you know, he had a, a policeman. I wasn't a policeman, though, you know. Uh, and uh, I just said to him, I said, I need to get back out in the parking lot. And then I went out, and then I got a call from the company. Uh, okay, well, you're not going to be going there anymore. You'll be going over to UPS. 
uh, over there, and there'll be somebody there. They always said this. There'll be somebody there who'll show you, you know, the rounds. Now, there's always a book, you know, there was instructions and stuff in it. Did you, so you go there and you look and you see, you know. But so I went to UPS, and there wasn't any, the guy who I relieved, and UPS was closed. You know, I was working Saturday and Sunday, you know. And uh, the uh, place was closed. Nobody was there, just me. You know, trucks parked at the end of the ramp. The ramp stopped, you know. The ramp, the truck was, you know, the area there, they had the stuff to go out. And then on the ramp, there was stuff going, in, getting ready to go in, and in the back of the truck, and it was all over the place, stuff like that. And so I always did my job, always. I don't know why, it's just the way I am. But, uh, and right across the street from the UPS place, because it was in like an industrial district, there was uh, a truck place that sold, I guess they maybe also would lease you a truck, you know, uh, or sell you a truck if you if you could afford to buy a you know eighteen wheeler or whatever, and there were some other places like that around there. So I worked there for several weekends. Several weekends I worked there. I worked there and did my rounds and everything was okay. Then I was there and then I heard you know one of these truck horns you know honk and then it got more and went and I thought what. What in the hell? What's going on? But I just made my rounds inside and everything. And of course, I'd occasionally go outside and, you know, check. It was fenced in, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I'd go out and look around. So I, I finally made my round outside or went outside. And there was a guy at the gate with an 18 wheeler trying to get in. And luckily, that gate was locked. Because he would have fucking killed me if he got to me. He was yelling and screaming. Luckily, I. Uh, luckily, he wasn't armed. <laughs> I mean, I was armed, but uh, luckily he wasn't armed, and he was yelling and screaming at me. And I said, "What's going on?" And he said, "You know, you know, you're supposed to. When we honk the horn, you're supposed to open up the gate and let us in." And that was the first I had heard of nobody. You know. It wasn't in the book, and nobody ever said anything to me about it. And I, I said, I'm awful sorry. I said, I'm new. I, I wasn't that new, but I, I said, I'm new. And I said, you're the first person that's ever come to the gate and honked the horn, you know. I never had anybody come to the gate while I work here, you know. And anyway, I let him in, and he, and he was looking daggers at me. And then I didn't turn my back on him. Then he left, you know, and went home. And I guess his probably his wife probably said where in the fuck have you been have you been fucking Sally or something or other and no no there was this guard and he he didn't let me in the gate when I honked I don't know what went on you know but uh, yeah that contract guard stuff they didn't pay you very much and uh, uh you got no respect. It was kind of interesting. Now, those of you who are familiar with anything like this, when I tell you, and I have mentioned it a couple of times, and somebody said no, you know, several people said no. But it's true. Because of uh, Pendergrass, a uh, city boss back in early days of Kansas City, Missouri, he ran Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, he helped uh, actually helped Harry Truman become President of the United States in a way uh, by getting Harry Truman he liked Harry Truman everybody liked Harry Truman from Independence, Missouri Kansas City, Missouri area uh, he was in World War uh, Truman was in World War uh, One with an artillery unit that had horses that, of course, uh, you know, things. And uh, the, uh, I think it was Irish. The unit was almost all Irish. And Truman was, I think, captain. And he had no previous military experience. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but 
he took care of his men and he didn't lose anybody and his you know and they came back you know to the, they were from Kansas City Missouri area they came back and they so anyway Truman had uh, uh, Pendergrass helped him run for judge now that's different than and I don't know how many other states it's that way there you know they had judges at court but a judge was a person who ran like a the county boss I'm what would they call him now you know the department I don't know but anyway then he ended up Truman ended up you know uh, people liked him too that and Pendergast kind of re, Pendergast respected him you know Pendergast was not an honest man but, but he respected an honest man Pendergast you know if you wanted and I ran I actually worked for at least one guy who back in those days you know went to Pendergast uh, I, I'd like a job you know uh, in the police department some people went you know they wanted a job in the police department the fire department I don't know if he could do it for the post office maybe too maybe he could for the, you know he had power it's just a and uh, but um, uh, anyway the city was corrupt well Pendergast I mean he didn't do mob hits or anything like that it was giving out jobs and then of course he had you know built a courthouse a county a courthouse a city hall and all those employees you know were Maybe he didn't actually hire those employees, the bricklayers and whatever, but he controlled the union or whatever that you know did, and he got his money that way. But then the rock and all that kind of stuff was from his uh, uh, supply and stuff like that. So, um, but. Uh, Okay, I got on that subject for some... Oh, okay. So Kansas City was corrupt. I don't know about St. Louis, the other city in Missouri. You know, the big one, Kansas City, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. But, so finally the state, you know, decided to take over. I'm not sure if they took over anything else, you know. But the state said, you know, hey, this police department is... And I can understand why, because... <laughs> Years later, I actually worked for some of those guys who worked, you know, uh, got their job through Pendergast on the police department or something. And uh, I actually had a guy who uh, I didn't want to work for him, but he was begging me to come to work for him. I was, I was working hospital security, and I had quit working hospital security. And... Uh, he wanted me and I actually think I think he had in his drawer in his I think he had two envelopes he had an envelope people I would never fucking hire and he had an envelope you know uh, people I can hire I can probably you know this person will probably be okay you know he'll suck my dick or whatever you know something like that he must have had two envelopes and for some reason I think he picked up the wrong envelope and uh, so he was called. I had a telephone answering machine, Radio Shack one, by the way. And uh, he was calling me. I knew what he wanted because he lived in Raymore, where I was a reserve police officer. And he was director of security at a hospital, research medical center. And so he was leaving messages you know he wanted me bad to go to work for him and I think he got the wrong I, he got the wrong envelope <laughs> um, and uh, so then he called the chief of police of Raymore really nice guy ex Kansas City Missouri police sergeant who had worked in the police department for this director of security when he was a some I, I think he was a captain or a major or something and uh, something like that absolutely horrible person <sighs> and
and I knew that. And uh, but anyway, so the director, uh, or the mayor, or the uh, chief of police of Raymore, Jim, uh, so and so has been trying to call you, and I said, yeah, I know that I don't want to talk to him. Well, he wants to give you a job, and I said, I don't want to work for him. And he says, oh, Jim, well, you know, he got me, you know, he lives here, you know. I said, yeah, I know, I've seen his property land over there, you know. And, well, he got me the job, you know, and could you at least talk to him, please, you know. And I said, and this was, he was a really nice guy. I said, okay, so I talked to him, and why in the world I went to work for him, I do not know, but I did. That was a mistake. And, uh. But right away he figured out that it, the reason he hired me, wanted to hire me, was there was a head nurse at the hospital. You know, they have directors of nursing and they have a, you know, a bunch of them. And maybe at, at night when the, on our weekends, one of those nurses will be hos, acting hospital admin, administration, you know, or whatever. So she makes, you know, decisions. If you want, if somebody, if, Especially like a guy, you know, I don't think anymore. I think guys know, hey, nursing is a good profession to get into, you know, for making good money. But um, uh, anyway, so this lady who was one of the nursing service directors at this hospital, she went to uh, Bill Gilmer and said, oh, I want you to hire my husband and uh, you know here's his experience or whatever and he had some good experience not as good as mine uh, and so uh, Bill Gilmer was oh shit because Bill Gilmer kept everything secret even from us even from the secure 25 security officers I mean he was a horrible horrible person and everything that he did he was a horrible person something would happen I'll give you an exact an example where there was a tunnel between our hospital and the nursing dorm uh, where student nurses and they they lived there too you know could sleep there and stuff and that and one of the uh, there was a tunnel that went over between the now you could go outside and you could you know go around that way but uh, this nurse student nurse said that she was attacked I don't think she was raped. Of course, we don't know because he covered it up. Uh, she said she was attacked or whatever. So anyway, we're having our one of our every three months or so we had a meeting, department meeting, which was kind of worthless because he was worthless. And we had one female security officer who worked at the nursing dorm five days a week. And there for a while. Uh, we didn't have a security officer hired in to work those other two days. So I ended up working there for quite a while. I worked those two nights in the nursing dorm, you know, which when the nurses had come down and talked to me, you know, they, I was uh, divorced at that point, so I was probably 40 or something, and they come down and talk to me, you know, young nurses and stuff like that. I didn't do anything inappropriate or say or do anything inappropriate, you know. But uh, anyway, the... Uh, This director, anyway, so but at that time, this female worked there five days a week. She would, she was perfect, for, you know, she was like a mother to these student nurses. But uh, she came in and she filled out her activity sheet. As soon as she got to work, she filled it out for eight hours, and it was the same every time, you know. Put it, you know, put it there. Um, but anyway, so she said, uh, Mr. Ross, uh, no, not with Mr. Ross. That's wrong. Different, you know, Mr. Gilmer. Uh, this. Wh what about this student nurse that said that she was attacked going through the tunnel or whatever? And he, God damn it to hell! I don't didn't want any of you people to know anything about that. And uh, you know, so he says uh, she just made up the she made up the story. He and you know, it turned out well. We don't know whether because he also. Like the report, if she hadn't have said something, we wouldn't have known anything about it. And he would lock up the reports when a report was made instead of making it available so we know, you know, he was unbelievable. Yeah. 
I couldn't believe it. I was stunned that he, you know, because if she was making fake, one, if there was somebody there doing that, we want to be looking for somebody, you know, and watching and be much more careful, you know. And if she was making the story up, I want to know, and I hope the rest of the guys wanted to know, because when I went through the, when, if I got a call from her, I'd be, you know, okay, I'll be making an escort through the, whatever we call it, you know, the, the tunnel, and, uh, you know, I don't, I didn't have to, you know, log, have, you know, record the time, you know, and then it took almost no time to get through the tunnel, then I'd be, okay, um, finish with the, I'm 10 8, you know, finish with the escort or whatever it was, you know, log the time so that, you know, and uh, this, he just totally, but, uh, oh, and so when he realized that he made a mistake and he did right away, he, and he took me up to the, uh, they had a cafeteria for, and for employees and for visitors. And they also was a, a, a shop, a place where they made, you know, bacon, eggs, whatever you need, you know, whatever, up there. He took me up, which was unusual for him to do, apparently. Which made the other guys like, why, you know. So anyway, we go there. He's buying me breakfast. And then I forget exactly how it, he said, uh, oh, well, he told me about... <laughs> Pendergrass, you know, I got, you know, and I went to him and he gave me that whatever and he said when something like that happens You know, you are indebted to that person, you know, and and I thought And I, I wish that I had a, I wish I had a, I was thinking wait a minute. I was You're telling me that I'm in I was thinking you're t he's telling me that I'm indebted to him He begged me he practically cried and told me, you know, please come to work for me. Uh, because this husband of this nursing service director, uh, he, he did have a good, it wasn't as good as mine, you know, but he had uh, some good credentials. So I was hired so he could go and, uh, you know, tell the, uh, director of nurses or whatever she wanted the not she wasn't the director but you know the ones underneath you know and still they kind of run the hospital especially on weekends and nights and that kind of stuff if some things come up you know you're a security guard you're armed you got a nightstick you got all those kind of stuff she's running the you know she runs when it comes right down to it uh, but uh, I was thinking I'm not indebted, you know, and he was telling me that, so. So anyway, when this, <clears throat> later on, he, I'm not sure he was a director of security. No, I don't think he was. I think finally when he left uh, uh, as director of security and, reti you know, retired, uh, before he left, of course, he told the person that was taking over, you know, Make sure that Jim Howard doesn't go out to that hospital where he lives, you know, Research Belton. You know, nobody else wanted to go. You know, in the beginning when he first came up there building the hospital, that's why I stayed. When it first came up, you know, he asked, which is unusual. I mean, why would you ask two years ahead of, you know? But that's because he wanted to, you know. So he asked and uh, about six guys or whatever said, yeah, I want to go put me on the list. And then, of course, I had him put me on the list and then of course he told you know a, a, a one of his supervisors who was a good supervisor I am surprised you could be a good supervisor with that guy as a boss um, and but then that guy who happened to live in Raymore <laughs> where I was a reserve officer and everything uh, he said uh, Jim uh, you know Mr. Gilmer said there's no way you see, he said he told, you know, told me and he told the new director of security who's coming in that you're not to go out there. And I said, now, did I say, well, that motherfucking son of a bitch, fuck his ass or what, you know. No, I said, you know, I'm going to trust that he is going to do, I knew he wasn't, I'm going to trust that he is going to do, you know, the right thing. 
at the right time. Anyway, like six people put in, they wanted to go out there, and one of them was a nice, a real nice security. I had a twin brother that worked at the hospital, identical twins. I guess I, anyway. Max, real nice guy, smart, good. <clears throat> um, he said, "Oh, Jim," he said, uh, "I put in to go work out there and everything," and I said, "Oh, okay, good," you know. And uh, he says, "Just as long as there's." Uh, two of us on duty. I'm not working hospital security by myself. And I said, there won't be two security officers you know, working in the shift. There'll be one. I said, one around the clock. Turned out I was wrong. They didn't have anybody on the day shift. No security on the day shift. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of why that, oh. But if, and I wouldn't have worked under those circumstances, except I could th almost throw a rock and hit my house, well, my trailer. I was I was trader trash, you know, so. and uh, so I did. You know, anyway, so Max uh, and so the, the uh, supervisor uh, that said, you know, he says, "Well, I, I, I'll, I'll work out there as long as I'm as I'm a supervisor." And I said, "I don't think they're going to have a supervisor, you know. I think there'll just be one of us around the clock." Well, there wasn't. You know, <laughs> they didn't have anybody on the day shift. But, uh, so, so, these, so there was nobody on the list. This guy's getting ready to retire, the director of security who, you know, swore that never would I be going out there and, you know, whatever. So he told the temporary, because the new guy hadn't started, the new director of security hadn't started yet. He told the new guy that was, or the acting lieutenant or whatever whatever he was, to make sure Jim doesn't go out there. And so, they, actually they called him charge officer because hospitals have charge nurses, a nurse that's in charge of a unit or whatever, so he was a charge officer. He was worthless. Uh, unbelievably bad. And Ah, uh, well, he wouldn't have been, he'd have to be bad to be working underneath that guy. Uh, so anyway, and so he, um, nobody else was on the list. Oh, they hired, they hired in two guys. No experience, you know, in hospital security or anything, and told them they would be working out there. And uh, so anyway, the office shift change. So uh, the uh, charge officer. Um, so I've got the shift that I was working and this new shift is coming in and so the room is filled and then uh, Charlie says uh, Jim by the way you will not be going out to research Belton Hospital he says I'm sending you know <laughs> I'm sending so and so and so and so and I said no nope. I said you're mistaken I said I'll be going out there and he said no you're not you're not going out there and I said, you know, Charlie, you wouldn't make a pimple on a guard's ass. You can't do anything right. I said, but I work the midnight shift. Do you think you could do one very simple thing? You're on the day shift. Human resources is open. Everything is open. Can you get me a grievance form? Do you think you could accomplish one simple little thing? And he said, I'll get you one. And of course, when I came in that night, it wasn't there, but I got one. And so then I get called in with my supervisor, the night shift supervisor, and he was terrified because of he'd worked there for years underneath, you know, that director of security and underneath Charlie. And he didn't want to be the job as he didn't want the job as supervisor. He was worried that he would do something wrong and he'd get in trouble or fired. It was the first job he ever had, and he wasn't a young guy. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, so, uh, so he, we both, you know, go there. Supervisor sitting next to him, and then Charlie says. Uh, well, Jim, the reason you're not going out to uh, research Belton Hospital is because the hospital isn't sending out any experienced personnel 
and uh, so that's the reason you're not going because I've been there like I think five years at that time waiting for that hospital to be built and that's the only thing I was waiting on you know? and I said well that's not correct Charlie you know it's not correct and I named off the nurses and respiratory therapy and they're going out there all they've worked here for years and they're going out there and then he I tell you though he had some gut he, well, he didn't have guts he was a chicken shit but he said well the reason you're not going out there is because uh, um, we, we didn't allocate enough oh you're making top of the pay scale you're at the top of your pay scale and the job out there is you know uh, starting pay and I said uh, well it's it's not going to be starting pay anymore because I'm going out there and uh, I said uh, and he said well we it, we didn't allocate money I said okay what you need to do oh he said uh, well there you know we we didn't put enough money for two security officers out there and you're at the top of the pay scale and I said well <clears throat> you need to go back and you need to get money allocated for, you know for that or just send me out there and I'll be the only security officer out there won't I and he said well the reason you're not going not going out there is you got a bad merit review and I said well I've never had a bad merit review I didn't have a bad merit reviews when I worked at St. Joseph Hospital I didn't have bad merit re in fact the ones at Trinity Lutheran Hospital if you watch some of my old videos my god that guy uh, he was not I actually liked him but he was racist I mean and, and other stuff but my god the, the merit reviews he gave me you'd have thought I was Jesus Christ come to you know <laughs> he gave me good merit reviews anyway and I said I haven't got any bad merit reviews here of course there I don't know what the other guys got you know but my rare you know was like everything was okay they were afraid to you know everything was just okay and uh, so anyway he says well you got a bad merit you got a bad merit review your supervisor gave you a bad merit but you haven't got it yet it's in my drawer and I said oh thank you so much Charlie I appreciate this I'm doing another grievance I'm doing a grievance about you and I said I can't wait to do it and then he says uh, 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 Jim uh, how long have I known you and I said I don't care actually I because I was working at a hospital he was working at a different hospital and you know and uh, I forget I said I don't care how long we've known each other I said I'm doing a grievance against you and he said uh, uh, Jim uh, uh, well, you won't need to do that uh, uh, clean your locker out and take your your stuff and you'll start tomorrow at you know research belt and hospital so I did worked there nine years you know but um, um, let's see okay an hour and 35 minutes I've got to stop doing this and I I do need to too I need to make them shorter and on one subject and I keep telling you and promising you do that I <coughs> also this microphone thing is okay I guess it is yeah uh, I hope this thing can keep and I think it will until about a week from now when I get this new thing oh and by the way I told you how quiet it was going to be the grounds crew people are here uh, so it's going to get noisy uh, anyway thank you very much for watching